let's talk about boosting, which is one of my favorite topics in machine learning. And it all started with a question of Michael Kearns, where he wanted to know whether you could turn a weak learning algorithm that was barely better than random guessing into a strong learning algorithm whose error rate is arbitrarily close to zero. And so you might be thinking, well, how could, how could you do that? Um, well, the idea he was getting at is that maybe you could sort of send a whole bunch of different things into the weak learning algorithm and have it produce a lot of classifiers and figure out how to combine them. But, but how, do you, how do you do that? Like how exactly, what input would you put into this weak learning algorithm and how do you combine the outputs to form something that's better? The answer, uh, well, the first answer to this question was, uh, was, was by Rob Shapiri, who wrote a paper called The Strength, uh, the Strength of Weak Learnability that answered this, this question. This was a famous question and a very famous answer. Now, um, he actually proved that weak learnability is actually the same, the same as strong learnability. Uh, so in particular, this is his, his theorem, first theorem from his paper, which is that a concept class is weakly learnable if and only if it is strongly learnable. And the proof was actually an algorithm that turned a weak learning algorithm into a strong one. Um, but the algorithm that he produced in this paper, um, although it answered this question, it wasn't actually a practical algorithm. But he worked on this problem for quite a while, and uh, in joint work with Joachim Freund in 1996, they answered that question by producing the Adaboost algorithm, which happens to be one of the best out-of-the-box machine learning method in existence. Okay, so Adaboost is, that's kind of my go-to, you can trust this kind of method. It's really neat. Anyway, so they figured out that you could reweight the data okay, in, in different ways. Okay, if you, if you find many different ways to reweight the data, and then it, each time you reweight the data, you run the weak learning algorithm to give you a weak classifier for each reweighted data set. And then you could take those weak classifiers and combine them to produce a weighted average that was actually a nice strong classifier. So this is a boosted model here. Okay, so I'm going to just provide here the outline of a generic boosting algorithm. Um, and uh, so for at each iteration of the algorithm, you construct a weight vector, which is a discrete probability distribution over the n training points. And then you run your weak learning algorithm on this weighted data set, producing a weak classifier. Okay, so we have a weak learning algorithm producing a weak classifier. So try to get that terminology straight there. So it's a weak learning algorithm producing a weak classifier. Okay, so the weak classifier is called HT. And then you calculate the error rate of HT on that weighted data set. So this is just, um, that formula there is just the weighted error rate. Okay, and then the key thing about this is that the error rate is slightly less than a half because it's a weak learning algorithm. It's got to be that the error rate has to be less than a half. It has to be slightly better than random guessing. Otherwise, it doesn't qualify itself as a weak learning algorithm. OK, so we have our weak learning assumption that that error rate is, at l is slightly less than one half. And that slightly less than is at least the, the amount w, or gamma WLA that's guaranteed by the weak learning algorithm. OK. So the weak learning algorithm says you're going to be at least this much better than random guessing. Okay, combine all the classifiers together at the end and output the final <laughs> combined classifier, uh, capital H down there. Okay, and, and H is going to be a combination of the weak classifiers that you got all along the algorithm. Cool. Now before I continue and kind of go into more detail about Adaboost, I want to give you the uh, I want to talk to you about the application that really made Adaboost popular, really put Adaboost on the map, which is face detection. Okay, so Viola and Jones um, created a lot of very uh, cute little weak uh, classifiers for detecting faces. And their weak classifiers look kind of like this. Okay, so you, you have this little, <laughs> little thing, and you're supposed to subtract the white area in the image from the black area. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like um, in a minute. So I'm just gonna grab that particular weak classifier and show you like how in the world that detects faces, right? That doesn't look like a face detector. And I'm gonna borrow uh, my friend Steve's face. Uh, St <laughs> Steve and I, um, used to teach classes together and he volunteered to hand me his picture for demonstrating face detection. So there's his face. And um, I'm gonna just put that little weak classifier on his face. And now remember, you're supposed to subtract 
what's in that white area from what's in the black area, or although now the white area is kind of clear, but still. So you subtract the, the pixels in these areas, and as you can see, you're gonna get basically zero in this case because um, they, the, the two air, they're both on his forehead, and when you subtract those two areas, you get nothing. So it's not detecting anything there. Okay, so no detection at that at that spot. Um, here, they're both dark, and so again, the difference between the black area and the white area is zero, so bah. But here, <laughs> this is where we are detecting something because the area, like you can see where his eyes were, this is all dark, and then just below his eyes is really, is, is like lighter. And so that's our weak classifier for detecting his eyes. Okay, so now there's the detection. Okay, um, cool. So we have an eye detector that way, and it seems to work kind of, you know, fairly decently across people. And you can go from, from black and white to color and use the same approach. Um, in any case, it's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a weak detector. It's not that much better than random guessing, but it's something, okay? So, but then you combine it with a whole lot of other weak classifiers. So this detector is detecting sort of the presence of, of a nose in between the eyes, right? Uh, and then the idea of Viola and Jones is that you use hundreds, of, hundreds and thousands of these weak classifiers at all different scales. And if you combine them together, you can actually, um, you can actually, <laughs> you can actually detect faces. And I remember um, when I was very young and I went to a machine learning conference and, I, and there was a demo going on where they were trying to do this face detection and they took a camera and they aimed it at the audience and um, they put a little, they had the classifier put a little box around everyone's face and everybody was like, wow, this is amazing. And I mean, now this is like, this is like a joke compared to what we can do now, but this is where it started, right? Being able to, um, being able to actually put a box around people's face. And that's, um, that's how Adaboost became kind of what it is. Okay, so let's go through more of the technical details of Adaboost. So again, we start with equal weights on all the data points. And then at each iteration, we uh, train the weak learning algorithm using that weighted data. And this produces a weak classifier. We choose our coefficients for the weak classifier, which tells, it, tells you how important that thing is in the final combination, and then update the weights. So uh, let me show you the weight update. Uh, it looks like this. I'm gonna go over it in more detail. Essentially, um, what you should think about is that the weights from the current iteration get multiplied by some factor, and then they get normalized. Okay, so what is that factor? Well, that factor has in it whether or not the point is correct, was correctly classified at, the, at iteration t by, weak, by that weak classifier. Okay. And then the normalization factor just makes sure that the weights are actually a discrete probability distribution on the data. Okay, so I'll go over that in a few minutes, um, but I want to go over kind of, an in, kind of the intuition for it before I go through more of the technical details. So let's start the points off with equal weight. Then we run the weak learning algorithm, and it gave us this weak classifier. It's the, our, our weak learning algorithm can only produce horizontal and vertical separators. That's, it's, that's why it's a weak learning algorithm. Okay, so this particular weak learning algorithm got a few points wrong. It got three positive points wrong, sorry. Now, what we'll do at the next iteration is make sure that those three points get extra attention at the next iteration. So we're gonna upweight those points, upweight those three positives at the top that are misclassified, and then downweight everybody else. Okay. Oh, sorry. Before we do that, we're, we're going to choose a coefficient for our final combined classifier. And that coefficient happened to be 0.41, and I'll tell you how we get that. I'll tell you the formula for that in a few minutes. Okay. So, again, we're going to upweight those positives and the misclassified positives and downweight everybody else. Cool. So, Increase the weights on the misclassified points, decrease the weights on the correctly classified points. Now we're gonna run the weak learning algorithm again. And this time, it definitely got those three misclassified points from the last round, it got those right. But it missed a few other ones. It missed these three negatives there, you see? But luckily those didn't have very high weights. And so because of that, 
the alpha that we get at this iteration is large. Um, alpha is actually related to how well the weak classifier did on the weighted data. And in this case, it did really well, so it gets a high alpha value. Okay, cool. So then um, we, again, decrease the weights on all the points we got correct, increase the weights on the incorrectly classified points, and then keep repeating this over and over until we decide we're done. Okay, so here, uh, this classifier did really well. The only points it missed had very, very low weights, and so its alpha got to be really large. Cool. Now, this is the final combined classifier here, where it took those three classifiers that it constructed and then weighted each one by alpha. And then lo and behold, the final combined classifier looks beautiful. It correctly classified all of the data points. Cool. All right, so let's go through the pseudocode for Adaboost with a little bit more detail here. So we have these three steps in the loop. We train the weak learning algorithm using the weighted data. We up choose the coefficients and we update the weights. Now, this is the weight update. So this is the weight update we were doing during that demo. So you take the weight that you had, DTI, in the current iteration, and then if the weight classifier got it right, you downweight it by a factor of e to the negative alpha. And if the weight classifier got it wrong, then you upweight it by e to the alpha. Okay, so that's what it was doing. And then after it changed all of those weights, then it normalized everything by dividing by a ZT, which is just the sum of the weights, just to make sure everything adds up to one. Okay, so again, here's the technical version of that. And um, just so that you see it here, um, so if HT agrees with the label YI, then that value is one, otherwise minus one. So it's like looking at the margins for the weak classifiers themselves. And then this negative alpha is actually super helpful because, you know, if you're, you know, if you were correctly classified, you go, you go, you get that negative alpha multiplied to you so that your weight, that your weights go down, right? The easy examples, weights go down, harder examples, weights go up. And so that negative sign is helpful. Okay, cool. Now, this is the formula that I've been hiding all along for alpha, and it's actually, <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of a, a very closely related to the error rate, right? So if the, if the error rate goes up, then alpha goes down, right? Um, so, um, but you're probably wondering where that formula came from because it's kind of funky, like one half log, one, where did that come from? Now, the easiest way I, I can, there's two ways I can tell you how it came from. <laughs> The first way is to say that Rob Shapiri plucked it out of his brain. Um, the second way I can tell you is that you could derive it using a very interesting definition of Adaboost or a very interesting kind of perspective on Adaboost, which is that it's gradient descent. Um, and so I will be doing that um, in, in, a sh in, in a video sh coming to you soon. Okay, cool. So just some historical notes. Um, so Freund uh, and Shapiri came up with Adaboost in 1996. Immediately after they published it, five different groups of scientists figured out that Adaboost was simply coordinate descent on the exponential loss. And so that in interpretation makes it very, very easy to derive things like the formula for alpha in terms of the error rate. And so um, that's why I'm going to derive Adaboost's whole formulation through the, um, through the coordinate descent derivation. Cool. So yeah, I will be doing that soon. <laughs> Thank you.